G'day, I'm Mark from Self Sufficient Me, and in this video, I'm going to give you 21 herbs and spices that you should always grow and why. Let's get into it. Number one is basil. Who doesn't like pesto? The Italian word for pound or crush it, like what this video is going to do to the YouTube algorithm. But of course we mean pound or crush the aromatic herb basil to make a condiment that only adds another classic to the greatness that is Italian cuisine. Traditional basil is an annual that pairs wonderfully with tomatoes, both as a companion plant to reduce pests in the garden and to eat. This famous herb is easy to grow in the garden or in containers, so there's no excuse. There are several different varieties of basil, including perennial types like this Thai basil here, that can grow for years and get huge. However, the taste isn't the same as the sweet annual types, often being stronger and going better with Asian food, such as curries and stir fries. Number two, coriander. It's not in season here at the moment, but I do have some plants that have gone to seed that I'll re sow soon. Coriander is a herb and spice, depending on how you use it, whether it's the leaves or the seeds. It's also called cilantro in the USA and Mexico because it's Spanish for coriander. Although coriander is often associated with Mexican food, it really is a world herb. It is native to Southern Europe, North Africa and Asia and has been used for thousands of years. Archaeologists even found some in Tutankhamun's tomb in Egypt. Apparently his mummy used to cook with it. The ground seeds are one of my favorite spices for preserving and flavoring meats like biltong. Number three is kaffir lime. Speaking of coriander, if you've ever had a Thai green curry, you've probably also experienced kaffir lime leaves finely chopped or young tender leaves added whole to give the dish a super citrus fresh hit right up the nostrils when you have a good slurp. You can use the rind of the fruit as well to flavor foods, but typically it's the hourglass shaped green leaves that are used in cooking. The tree is usually compact, but they can get five or more meters high and wide. However, if you prune it back regularly, they respond well and shape nicely, so it can be kept to a manageable size if required. Number four is lemongrass. Speaking of kaffir lime, if you've ever had a Thai green curry, deja vu anyone? or if you're into refreshing herbal teas and Asian food, then lemongrass is for you. Lemongrass is a grass. It likes a good warm spot to grow and is easy to divide and multiply if you want to hedge it or grow a ton of this lemon scented herb. And since it has citronella qualities, it might even help to keep the mozzies away. Number five is turmeric. I always get in trouble on how to pronounce this, turmeric, turmeric, whatever. If you think it's trendy to sprinkle turmeric over your latte, then imagine how cool you'd be if you grew it and made your own turmeric powder. I practically turned one plant about 10 years ago into a never ending supply. And recently I found you don't even have to bury the rhizomes for the plants to grow. Here is a bunch of turmeric that I had harvested and then threw in a pile near these trees. Then I simply forgot about it and look at it now, growing like a champion. As you can see, it thrives on neglect and grows well in containers too. Number six is ginger. Hey, why did the spice get bullied? Because he's ginger. Whenever someone mentions ginger, I can't help but think about one of the first Grow A Ton videos I made, which was on ginger. I look like such a hobo in that thumbnail. That's what happens when you eat too much of it. Anyway, growing ginger is as easy to grow as turmeric if you live in a warm climate. And if you live in a cooler climate, growing it in containers or a hothouse could be an option and harvest it early for young ginger, which is not as strong as mature ginger, but it's still really great to use, especially raw. Number seven is galangal. Three root or rhizome crops in a row. How about that? If you have never heard of galangal, but like Asian food or drink Polish vodka, you've had it. Galangal is a similar crop to turmeric and it's part of the ginger family of plants. 
except it can grow much bigger. And I found that out the hard way when I grew it in our veggie garden. Its tall stalks shaded everything out around it. Galangal has a distinct medicinal smell and taste. It's not something you wanna chew on directly, but strategically used as an ingredient in dishes like luxes, soups, sautés, and noodles, its unique quality is fundamental to lifting the overall flavor. I now grow it in various locations around our property, usually in the orchard, so it won't outshade other plants. Number eight is oregano. Native to the Mediterranean where it grows wild on rocky slopes, oregano is a herb that is often used dried for its more intense flavor and keeping qualities. A member of the mint family of plants, oregano, like mint, tends to die back and regrow here in the subtropics. It will often die back in winter and then burst into life in spring again. It grows really well in containers, but as you can see, I've decided to move mine into a garden bed, which I'm yet to do. So I can't wait to start growing some more soon because you just can't beat it sprinkled over some European style cuisine to give it that authentic taste. Number nine, is time, and this is another plant that I've got to regrow. But who doesn't need more time? And that rhymed. I wish I had a ton of it. This tiny leafed sprawling plant is a relative of oregano and also native to the Mediterranean. Did you know that in the Middle Ages, time was placed under pillows to help people stop getting nightmares? It's true. And also that's where the term night time came from that part isn't true seriously i'm not sure if it cures nightmares but if you haven't tried growing it i think it's high time you gave time a go in your garden number 10 lemon verbena sounds like a south american girlfriend i had in my 20s ah verbena <laughs> i've only been growing verbena for lemon verbena because there are many different varieties for a few years now and it's already one of my favorite herbs to grow and lemon verbena happens to be from south america and it does have a strong lemony smell and citrusy taste it's really pleasant and it goes well with fish poultry roasted veggies it's not the most attractive plant to grow but you can improve it by pruning the bush back before its main flush in spring to help it bush out more you can also get slight variations like lime verbena number 11 is dill i grew dill in here last season before this dreaded pumpkin vine took over the place from famous dill pickles to dill buttered roasted or boiled potatoes dill would have to be one of the world's and my most favorite herbs. Known as dill weed, I certainly wouldn't call it a weed. Dill is easy to grow, like a weed, but it's not invasive and it actually looks really nice in the garden. Dill is best used fresh as it loses its flavor when dried in the traditional way. However, I recently discovered that when freeze dried, it retains its flavor. So I made it into a powder, mixed it with some mayo, and it makes a delicious sauce for a burger. If you don't want to be a dill, make sure you grow it. Number 12 is parsley. Flat or curly leaf parsley would have to be one of the world's most well-known herbs. And probably one of the most thrown away garnishes left on the side of a plate in restaurant history. Parsley seems to be seasonal here in our climate as well, not liking the really hot, humid weather, so it grows best through our winters. And it doesn't germinate very easily from seed either, although the flat leaf or Italian parsley tends to germinate much easier than the curly leafed ones. And that often comes up by itself in our garden if the previous crop is left to flower and seed. A distinct taste with a wide climate range for growing, it's a must to have in your home garden. Number 13 is bay leaf. Leaves from this slow growing, aromatic, beautiful tree are used to flavor stews, curries, casseroles, lamb shanks, and sauces. Some say the dry leaves are more fragrant and less bitter than the freshly picked ones. But I don't notice a big difference and I often use them conveniently plucked straight off the tree 
from my own rear deck. This plant is our oldest herb, traveling with us in a trailer, getting wind burnt all the way from Victoria, about an 18 hour trip, planted 16 years ago here in our backyard. Number 14 is mint. I sure could go a nice refreshing mojito right now, but mint is more than just muddled into the bottom of a cocktail glass with ice. As we all probably know, mint is a strong base flavor for so many other things, particularly confectionery. I just can't wait for after dinner mints to make a comeback. I've covered mint a lot on my channel, so you've probably heard my biggest tip, which is to plant it where it can be contained, like in this raised round garden bed here. Because if you don't, what can happen is it'll get out into your garden, those roots will secretly go underground and then it'll start popping up everywhere and you'll never get rid of it, no matter how many mojitos you drink. Number 15 is chives. Chives may not save lives, but it sure will save your dinner party when you realize you've forgotten the onions and the garlic. Because the aptly named garlic and onion chives are a great substitute. Surprisingly hardy, chives grow in a number of places, containers or out into the garden, in full sun, or even in the shade under other plants or structures. It really is a fantastic versatile herb to grow. Number 16 is the curry tree. And it's native to, you guessed it, India. This plant or the leaves of it is the base for so many curry dishes and other recipes. The leaves can be used fresh or ground down into powders and pastes. It grows easily from seed, so easily that it's classed here in Australia as a weed risk. So what we need to do, I think, is to eat more of this plant so that we keep the numbers down. Number 17 is rosemary. Someone who knew nothing about flowers asked Mary if this was a rose. Is this a rose, Mary? And the name stuck. Now I can't verify if this story is true, but if it is, it's a cracker. The short pine needle leaf like herb is a great match for lamb. And we Australians like to wear a sprig of it on commemorative days, such as Anzac Day, to remember the fallen. It's a top herb, and I grew it next to the path to smell the wonderful aroma every time you walked past. Number 18, chili. I'd be silly not to mention the chili as a spice to enhance all types of food and really bring out that flavor. Yes, chili peppers are indeed a fruit, but it's also considered a spice, so let's not split hairs. I love chilies, unless they get in my eyes, and then I have several other names for it that I can't repeat here on camera. But honestly, our garden and our diet wouldn't be complete without growing chilies. Number 19 is mustard. Like chilies, mustard can be classed other than a herb or a spice because it's also a salad crop. I've made our own mustard paste before from our own harvested mustard seed. And although it's a bit of a process, it sure was worth it. The seeds can be used in cooking and pickling or the young leaves tossed in salads or stir fries as a herbal pickup to lift that overall flavor. Number 20 is fennel and the last place I grew it was right here. Fennel is part of the carrot family and can be grown for its bulbous root, shaven into salads or cooked in stews and roasted. As a herb and spice, the aniseed flavor of the leaves and seeds go excellent with fish, eggs, and in soups or stews. Fennel is easy to grow from seed and being a vegetable herb and spice should make it reason enough to sow some in the patch. And finally, number 21 is garlic. And this one here is a little bit smaller than usual from our organic supplier that grows inland from here. It gets a bit colder, but even he had a tough season and they came out quite small than usual. Garlic is my old sparring partner. 
It's both one of my favorite spices to eat or use in cooking and one of the hardest plants to grow here in our subtropical climate. But that doesn't stop me from trying. Garlic is from the allium family, similar to onions, chives, leeks. I'm sure you don't need me to tell you what an amazing food flavor and enhancer garlic is. Just think of garlic bread say no more. Now, there are plenty of other herbs and spices that are available and some that I also grow that are quite well known and popular, but they didn't make my top 21 for whatever reasons, either personal preference or perhaps I'm still working them out and who knows, they might make the list in the future over something else. Do you have a favorite herb or spice that wasn't included in my top 21 that you think should be in there? If you do, whack it down in the comment section below. But when you do, tell me which one of mine you would remove or replace. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure you give it a big spicy thumbs up and share the video around, subscribe if you haven't already because that helps my channel out heaps, the sharing and the subscribing. Thanks a lot for watching, bye for now. Cheers.